Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video, we're going to illustrate how recursion works. And for this example, we have this factorial function that uses recursion. All right, so we have a factorial function that is written recursively, and we have a base case and the recursive call. So how does this work? And the best way to explain how recursion works is to draw it out. So here we have a call stack, and this is essentially the stack memory. And let's say I do factorial of five. And just to simplify things, I will call this f of five. Okay, so when I make this function call, we are going to use one stack frame, and this is f of five. And this is going to return n times factorial n minus one. So this is going to return five times f of four. So what we need to do is add another stack frame. So now we have f of four, and this returns four times f of three. So we add that to the stack frame, and this is three times f of two, and then we add that to the stack frame, and then this is two times f of one, then we add f of one to the stack frame, and then we get one times f of zero. So we have f of zero over here, and essentially, if we get zero, we return one. So basically, once we get to a factorial of zero, we've reached our base case. And when we reach our base case, we return one. So f of zero is going to return one, and we can remove this stack frame. And then f of one is going to return one times one, which is one. So we remove this stack frame as well. And then f of two is going to return two times one, and we've removed this stack frame. f times three is going to return three times two, which is six, and we remove this stack frame. Then f of four is going to return four times six, which is 24, so we remove this stack frame. And then finally, f of five is going to return five times 24, which gives us 120. And then afterwards, we can remove this stack frame. So that's how recursion works when we have a base case. Basically, we add on stack frames, and once we hit the base case, we trickle back down. Now, what happens if I don't have the base case? So if I don't have the base case, and I cross this out, well, we're going to have f of zero return zero times factorial of negative one. So this will be zero times f of negative one, and then we'll call f of negative one, which gives us negative one times f of negative two, and so on. So basically, we're going to keep adding more stack frames to the call stack. And eventually, we're going to run out of memory. So basically, we're going to keep on piling up the stack frames, and once we run out of memory, we don't have any more space to put the next stack frame, so it's going to overflow. For that reason, this is called stack overflow. And you might be familiar with the website called Stack Overflow. And basically, it's a website where people can post programming questions. So now hopefully you understand how recursion works with this factorial function and why having a base case is very important. Because again, without a base case, we'll eventually run out of memory. All right, so that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give this video a like. And if you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more C++ tutorials, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.